Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Yunido from Madra MSO. Uh, I am the last person for the day, and uh, my topic would be the overview of the metric coding and analysis. So all the training materials from on the Madra always has these two slides. Madra is developed uh, by the ICH in 1990, and the right of the Madra is held by ICH and MSSO is an organization working on the, in the contract with the ICH, ICH and provides maintenance and the training and operation of the MADRA. So MSSO's activities are or supervised by the ICH MADRA MC and the US, Britain and the European organizations and the Canada and WHO, these are the members of the MC. And all the materials are protected by the ICH and you can utilize these materials for your internal training. But if you have any modifications to the materials, you always have to identify that modification. So these are the agenda for this uh, lecture. I have given about an ha uh, one hour and a half, so we are not able to go over all the details of the MADRA, but we will go into the background and the organization and the characteristics of the MADRA. And then when you apply MADRA to your work, you need to do some coding. So I will explain how you can do the coding uh, and also I will share some simulation of the browser. Then I will also analyze the data which is coded. So under the domain of the safety, I will uh, look into how the MADRA is utilized and the, how we can utilize SMQ. So although I am the lecturer for this time, I want to have some interactive session. So Paul F would be utilized as a tool. So if you have the notebook or the laptop, you can just enter polev.com and for the username, you can enter yunhuido282, then you can participate in the quiz. I tried it on the uh, cell phone, but the Chrome is not working very well. So you can use like Edge or the internet browser from other companies, you can try them. So, I kindly ask you to connect to that uh, pollf.com. I ask the question to see if how many people are participating in this pollf. So, pollev.com is the site uh, where you can uh, have an access to it. I think most of people here are from the pharma companies. So, please leave the window open to, so that you can participate in the quiz during the session. Thank you for accessing the site. So let me explain what MADRA is about. You can see that the MADRA is acronym of the Medical Dictionary for Regulatory Activities. So it means the medical dictionary for the regulatory activities to be conducted. But here is one thing that you pay attention to, which is dictionary. So dictionary, well, you should not be confused with that term. When it comes to the dictionary, usually it provides the definition of a certain word. That's what dictionary is about. However, Madra does not provide definition. Uh, rather, it provides the structured data library of terminologies. So you call, uh, we call it terminology rather than the dictionary. So although there is a dictionary, a word in the title, but it's not actually dictionary, it's more the terminology. So for the MADRA, the MADRA can be utilized by the regulatory agencies and the industry. It is clinically verified terminology for a medical area. So clinically verified means that the HCPs actually verify the terms. And this is the international uh, terms, terminology. So when we call MADRA as like international 
uh, medical uh, terminology, then you may create some unnecessary confusion among different types of the dictionary. So it's better to call it as madra in Korean too. So madra is developed to be used for the pre-approval and after marketing approval and during the whole life cycle of the regulation. And also, this is kind of a, a database where the entry, retrieval, and evaluation and presentation of the data can be uh, enabled. And for the MEDRA, standardization is important. So the regulatory body also used the MEDRA and also industry also used the MEDRA terminology. So there is a standardization when it comes to the terminology. And also because this is the database, the monitoring and the evaluation and also uh, communication and the sharing of the data and also oversight can be better done with this tool. And Madra covers not just the ordinary uh, drug products, but also the biopharmaceuticals, vaccine, and drug device combination products. So it's a very comprehensive terminology. So I will explain uh, about the MSSO. This is based in the US, and it has the contract with the ICH. So MSSO develops the terminologies and also maintains the, uh, the terminology database. So MSSO is not the owner of the MADRA, it is a kind of a custodian of a MADRA. And when it comes to the governance, ICH, Management Committee or the MC, supervises the, all the activities about the MADRA, uh, including the fee for the subscription and the new project need to be approved by the MC. And the training programs are continuously provided by the MSSO. And there is also JMO. This is a separate partner organization which manages MADRA as MSSO does. So JMO is for the Japanese version of the uh, MADRA. And other than Japan, all other countries subscribe or join the MADRA through the MSSO. The where you can uh, utilize MADRA. It is not applied for the preclinical testing. It starts from the clinical one, phase one, until the after the marketing approval. So as you can see here, these are the applications where the MADRA can be used. For example, the safety information database of the pharma companies or the regulators, and also ICSR, the individual cases safety reports. And also, the safety summary that goes along with the ICSR is also the application where the, uh, you can find the MEDRA. And clinical trial report or investigators' brochures or the core company safety information, you can also utilize MEDRA to these uh, applications. And some countries or the regions, a certain tables or the tabulated information need to be based on the MADRA for the marketing applications. And other than that, the research institutions utilize MADRA in public, uh, uh, publicizing their uh, study. And the prescription advertisement is also some application, one application. So these are the potential applications for the MADRA. But to what extent required or to what extent recommended, these are different from one uh, area to another, so you need to check. So what about Korea? How and to what extent Korea utilized MADRA? In 2019, September, the Korean translation of the MADRA, the first version of version 2020.1 was first published. And last year, June, E2BR3 uh, format was introduced. So the MFDS started to utilize MADRA. So the ADR of the investigational uh, products, that report also utilized uh, MADRA for reporting the ADR. And the post-marketing ADR, the any drug, and also the Korean Institute of the 
drug safety and risk management. These are two tracks at the moment, but in the future, uh, they will be uh, converged into one track, which utilizes R3 format in the future. And also the submission. The efficacy, effectiveness, regimen, dosage, and the precautions. Uh, in those sections, the ADR uh, are recommended to be written uh, with the EMADRA terminology. So you can refer to the EMADRA when you write down the uh, application or the submission dossier. So this is from the MFDS. This is the implementation guide for the electronic transmission of the ACSR uh, released in uh, 2021. And if you visit the NE drug page, then if you uh, open the format or the form, then you can see the MADRA. So you can submit the MADRA ID so that you can have the structured information, structured information of the MADRA, and then you can utilize it to the submission. So the MADRA is included into the E2B RA3. But E2B RA3 is very complicated, involving many different sections. And of them, 12 elements are based on the MADRA. So you can report those items based on the MADRA, like the disease history, accompanying symptoms, ADR, indications, or the test or the examine, examination names. So these things are need to be reported using MADRA. I am sharing 12 items here. You always provide uh, the MADRA code and the version information. So E2B R3 form, there are 24 items where the MADRA uh, code is applied. But in terms of the code, uh, there are 12 types of the element where the MADRA can be applied. So when it comes to the details of the MADRA, meaning the, uh, the content, the structure, and the characteristics of the MADRA, as you can see here, there are five levels of structure. So you can see the logo. You can see five green stripes representing five levels. The highest would be the system organic, uh, organ class, which is SOC. It has 27. So you call it as an SOC, or you can just call it as a SOC. And HLGT, high level group term, and HLT, high level term. And the fourth layer is really important, which is PT, preferred term. We call it as PT. And I will show you some details. The reason why PT is important is that when you utilize MADRA and enter the data, statistical statistics and the analysis uh, can be done with the PT. When the measure was established, the clinical review and verification were done. And in order to be recognized as the PT, the term or the concept need to be recognized as an individual concept in the medical domain. Only then the term can be recognized as the PT. So in, in, during the entering entry, the synonyms which is included in the LLT, the entry of the data is done at the LLT. So the coding is done at the LLT level and the utilization of the data is uh, occurring at the PT level. There are 27 SOCs you can see on the screen. This is the list of the 27 SOCs. You can see Korean language. And if you look at the textbook, an uh, anatomical textbook, you can see this type of A, uh, the terms like blood disorder, ear and labulatin uh, disorder, and hepato uh, bilary uh, disorders. And, and also, you can see the cause of the diseases reflected into the name of the SOC, like congenital ones the congenital SOCs and implementation, uh, the inflammation and the immune system related disorders. On the right side, the bottom, you can see the social circumstances SOC. This is very special. Here, it's not about the name of the disease. It's more about 
the patient information that affect the patient condition. So, for example, smoking or using gla wearing glasses. So, these kind of information can be coded using this SOC. And for surgical and medical procedures and uh, the vaccines, and also there are SOCs related to the product. So, there are like 27 SOCs. And maybe you have some questions. These are the highest level, and you have like 27 separate SOCs. Can it work? But I would say that these all different SOCs are all interrelated, so they are not separate, they are not fragmented. So the Medra, what Medra does for that is in the next uh, slide is the multi-axial structure. So multi-axial means here is that one uh, medical concept can be represented into two SOC by linking uh, these two uh, SOPs. I told you that the uh, medical concept starts at PT. So one PT can be connected to two, more than two SOCs. So by having that multi-axial structure, the relevance or the reference uh, can be presented. So one PT can be connected to multiple SOCs. So when we do the classification, we can have some different classification and therefore have some uh, flexibility in MEDRA usage. So here it says one PT belongs to several SOC. Then if you go from top to bottom, then uh, there can be some double counting issue. So in order to prevent it, although one PT is linked to many different SOC, but there should be one primary SOC. So when we have the accumulated uh, result, uh, the double counting uh, should be prevented. And because we have the primary SOT assigned, and therefore the standardized data presentation can be uh, possible. The primary SOC is not something that the user can designate. So it is already predefined and predetermined in the MEDRA. So we have to follow which uh, SOC is a primary SOC for a certain PT. So that's the concept of the multi axial structure, but I will share some examples. The PT influenza. The influenza occurs at the respiratory tract and the influenza virus uh, infect the tract. So here you can see that the viral upper respiratory infection, so it is connected to the infl inflammation, but on the left side, you can see, uh, you can also see the influenza viral infection and the viral infectious disorder. So PT influenza is connected to the respiratory and also the influenza, so infection. So all PTs are well organized in this way. And here the infection is the primary SOC and respiratory is the secondary SOC. And there is a rule to decide the primary SOC. So the next slide will explain about how the primary SOC is determined. The PTs that is linked to only one SOC, then that SOC becomes the primary SOC. That's for sure, because there are S uh, PTs that is linked to only one SOC. If that is the case, that SOC becomes the primary SOC. And second, the PTs that show disease signals and symptoms, for them, the SOC, uh, which is related to the uh, presentation site, becomes the primary SOC. But there are some exceptions. For the congenital terms or disorder terms, the congenital becomes the primary SOC and the neoplasm. The neoplasm benign malignant and unspecified becomes the primary SOC. And for the infection and infestation, that uh, it becomes the primary SOC. So these are the three exceptions or the three rules. 
So if the PT is not the congenital, not the neoplasm, not the infection, then their presentation site becomes the uh, primary SOC. So because the disease names can be very uh, complicated. For example, like it can be congenital and also malignant in the infection. So even for these exceptions, there is a priority. So the first priority is the congenital disorder, and the second is the the benign, malignant, and unspecified neoplasm, and third is the infection. So this is the order for the primary SOC to be assigned among the exceptional cases. So let me share some keys. So let's say we do have the gestational diabetes for PT. So this PT is linked to the SOC. This is the multi-axial uh, PT. So for this gestational diabetes, uh, please choose the OD linked SOC for this PT, gestational diabetes. So you can choose multiple answers. Gestational diabetes, what kind of SOCs are related to this PT? So you can submit your answer. Let's see. So the answers include one, two, four. The pregnancy, uh, perperium, and prenatal uh, condition, and also it's an immune system disorder, and also metabolism, and also nutrition disorder. So these are the PT linked to three SOCs, and the primary SOC would be number one. And if you think about the rule, the gestational conditions are also takes priority in deciding the primary SOC, although I didn't talk about it before. So when you have the disease name, then that the SOCs related to that disease are all linked with the under the uh, MEDRA. The next question. Uh, find out the primary SOC for this congenital HIV infection. The PT is the congenital HIV infection. So what would be the primary SOC for this PT? Actually, uh, number one to four are all related SOCs, but we need to choose one primary SOC. One is primary and other three are secondary SOCs. And there is no priority among the secondary SOCs. So here, if you think about the rule and exceptions in designating the primary SOC, then you can think about what would be the appropriate answer here. The majority, I think, knows the answer here. Number one, the congenital, familiar, and genetic disorders. It is also related to the pregnancy because this is congenital and it's also the immune system disorder and also infection. Everything is related. However, the primary SOC is number one. So I uh, talked about the structure of the MEDRA, then move to, now move to the coding. I already mentioned the word coding, but we need to define what coding is. In MEDRA, when we say coding, the developers may think about the coding of the program, but it's not. Simply put, it means you select the MADRA terminology, the appropriate one, so that activity is called as coding. So like medical affairs team or the PV team or the clinical trial team at the pharma companies, when they hear coding for the MADRA, you can see it as a selection of the terms. So we say coding or codification. It means the selection of terms of the MADRA terms. So it may be a little bit different from one company to another, depending on the process, but the you see, we have some documented adverse response here, and then they are coded into the MADRA 
turns. So here you can see throbbing above temple or aching all overhead, like pulsing pain in head, a really bad headache or the headache. These are the reported description of the condition. But when they are coded into the madra, they are coded as headache. The second example, easier one, infection in lungs. But from the LLT term, it is coded as lung infection. So you find it and then select it. And third one is a little bit complicated. The patient took drug A instead of drug B and then experienced hypertension. That's the reported situation or the uh, adverse response. So here, the result, which is the hypertension, need to be coded. But at the same time, the patient took wrong drug. So that should be coded as wrong drug administered. So we need to understand the, the reported information and then uh, find out and select the uh, term. Usually the medical terms or the terminologies are reported in details. So you can search with the keywords, but you open the Medra browser, rather than just to do the copy and paste of the terms in the reported information, rather than doing that, you need to think about what kind of the information is reported. By doing so, you can find a uh, more appropriate uh, keyword and therefore reduce the searching time. So is it like clinical condition or is it like indication, the test result? Is it about injury or is the name of the procedure or the misuse of the uh, drugs? So you need to think about to what category of the safety report this re reported information falls into or there can be some complicated or combined issue. So you need to think about and assess what is being reported. Then I will open up the Metra browser and uh, share some simulation. So on my laptop, I will share the browser so that you can see. So when you open up the browser, then Everything is in English, but you can change it into Korean interface. And the Medra, as you know, the terminologies are all translated into Korean. So you can uh, change the settings so that you can see English and Korean. So I recommend to use two languages. And if you are able to uh, understand three languages, then you can use a three language setting. And the Metra version is updated twice a year, so you can change the version here. The reason that you have the 22.1 version, that's because the Korean language or the Korean translation was provided from the 2020.1. But if you select the English setting, then you can see the from the very uh, initial version. So you can change some settings here. And if you need a metro code like number here, you can click on this. Then you can see the number code along with the terminology. And here, influenza as a PT, we take the example. So let me uh, check other SOCs. You can see 27 SOCs on the left side. And of that, I choose gastrointestinal disorders. You click on the plus sign, then you can see HRGTs down below. And because this is the gastrointestinal disorder, then you can see many different anatomical uh, areas or the, uh, the sections of the body where you can experience gastrointestinal disorders. The ulcer, I go for the ulcer, PT, so you can see that here HLGT related to the ulcer. And depending on the site where the ulcer occur, you can see some different categories. So HLT, I open it. And then you see uh, you can open up the PT. And here PT, you have like different colors, red, blue, and green. 
And if you click on this uh, case, then you can see uh, the meaning of these different colors. As you can see here, the blue line shows um, shows that this is the primary terminology, and here you can see the PT and the details of the that PT. This is not just about gastrointestinal uh, SOC, but also related to uh, the the damage. But the blue shows that this is the primary location. And here, the gastrointestinal uh, perforation. Um, this is the primary terminology. The gastric ulcer here does not appear in uh, with the uh, SOC, but here only with the gastrointestinal uh, disorder SOC. This is the Helicobacter virus perfusion or the ulcer. Um, this is the uh, multi axial one. So Helicobacter ulcer, if you click on it, it is also linked to the inf uh, inflammation. It starts from the gastrointestinal SOC, so this is the secondary location. This is why it is represented in green. So LLT, you can go down to the LLT, you can see many different uh, terms uh, like perforation, bleeding, and other different terms that are related to the ulcer. Very uh, deep down concept or the conditions. For other different similar terms that represent or that refer to the gastric ulcer. And the red one, the box one, LLTs. The non current LLT are represented in red. Non current LLT, these terms that appeared in the MEDRA, once the term is registered with the MEDRA, they cannot be deleted. However, if they are not going well with the MEDRA rule or there is a typo or if they are not used, then they are uh, regarded as the non current terms, so they stay in the system however they do not be they are not used for coding so i explained uh, different colors uh, because this is the browser you can make a query with the uh, keyword cardiac failure let's see try to find out cardiac failure So I enter the keyword, the LRT, cardiac insufficiency. I open up with the plus sign. Then then you can see the higher hierarchy. It belongs into the heart disorder. Then you can see the path to the LLT. And if you click on the, the search result included, and then all different LLTs, including the cardiac failure. It can be acute or deterioration or the chronic, whatever uh, that has the cardiac failure, other LLTs are appearing together. So, so this is what you do, like move to the browser on the uh, right side, then LLT heart failure. You can see from top down, you can identify at what location this is uh, the what location this term is on the overall structure and also you can find out some similar terms so you can find out the appropriate selection of the terms by looking at and identifying the structure or the hierarchy and synonyms 
There is a synonym section here too. The search for the synonym. If you open it up, the cardiac failure, I enter that cardiac failure, but here, heart failure. So there are the terminologies that have the heart failure in it. So I check on the, the synonym, the use of the synonym. So here, you can see the different groups of the synonyms. For example, bleed, hemorrhage, they mean the same thing. So they are in the same synonym category or the group. And the cardiac, they are in the same group with the heart. So although I enter cardiac, still the result show the terminologies that have heart. So the synonyms are already grouped. So you can utilize this one for your search. And of course, you can change the setting to uh, Korean, although not many. There are also uh, the, simil uh, the synonym groups like thoracic, the chest, and others. So you have the synonym groups. So I showed how you can use the browser. So moving back to the uh, presentation deck. So you can do the coding using the uh, Madra browser. And there is a coding convention and that should be made into the SOP. I always talk about it. Different organizations have to have some SOP, the kind of a internal guideline on how to do the coding. And the reason that we need to have the coding convention is that when we exchange the coded data, the receiving party also have to understand how you codified the terms using Medra. So, for example, the typo abbreviations or acronyms. When you have these in the reported information, how did you code them? And if you have like the combined word or the due to, then how did you or to what extent you will include it? And sometimes like the, for example, the chest pain, you are reported information on chest pain. Then you may not be understanding the situation clearly because it may be related to the heart or the gastrointestinal uh, symptoms. So the additional questions or the further questions for clarification can be uh, posed. So that can be a part of the coding convention. So as I said, the reason that we need to have the coding convention is because the coding uh, people who are doing the coding may have different background, different knowledge, but still we need to have the consistency. And you can see that there are 25,000, uh, more than 25,000 uh, PTs. So there are some rooms for difference. So that's why we need to have the uh, convention to have the consistency. And some big companies may have like the automatic encoding function, but still the manual work is, re uh, is required, particularly for the review. So we need to have the coding convention. And when you establish your coding convention, you can refer to the guideline document. This is the PTC or the point to consider. So the, we call it as a PTC document. So as you can see from here, the uh, Madra user guide. So this is like the coding guideline for the Madra. So in selecting the terminologies, the recommendations or the advices are included in this document. And as I said, the coding convention need to be clearly communicated uh, to the receivers and therefore the basic rules or the points to consider uh, in deciding or establishing the coding uh, convention are well delineated. And these also include many different uh, cases or the examples. So when you establish your SOP or the coding convention, this PTC document need to be your reference and you cannot go against uh, what the PTC guides you to do. So if I uh, explain a little bit more about the PTC, 
So within the ICHMC, there is a working group, and the working group is developing and developed the PTC, and it is updated to one time uh, a year for the uh, MEDRA itself. There are two times of the update per year, March and September. English, Japanese, Chinese, Korean, Spanish, and Russian are the complete virgin languages, like French or Germany and other languages. The MEDRA language is increasing. So I'm not sure whether it is 17 or 19 languages, but for those languages, there are condensed version of the PTC, not the complete version. And you can download the PTC from the Metra homepage or the website. So these are the PTC uh, or the point to consider delineated in the document. So first of all, always use the LLT for coding and always use current LLT, non-current LLT, which were read in the simulation should not be used. And the LLT that accurately the reported information the most need to be selected. For example, there is an absence on face. That is the reported information. Then you do the keyword search in the Madra browse. You can find out LLT absence, but at the same time, because the report was mentioning face, so you can more specific LLT, which is a facial abscess. It's a accurate coding. So you need to uh, find out and search the LLT that most accurately reflect the reported information. And as I said, the non-current terminology is staying within the browser, but it's not used for the coding. It's only for the uh, the history data or the, uh, the previous data check. And the second principle is that when you do the coding, it would be great if you have one specific LLT. However, sometimes you need to choose two, more than two LLTs. So for example, metastatic uh, gingival cancer, that's the reported information. So when you do decoding for this, there is a there is no LLT for this specific information. However, we do have the gingival cancer and also the metastatic uh, carcinoma. So we have two LLTs. So you can choose one of them or you can code both of them. These two, both of them are viable. And you need to decide which way you go for, and then that should be documented uh, on your procedure document. And actually, the best way is to select both. But because of the database structure, if you cannot choose both, then you need to be uh, you need to be uh, you need to uh, choose one, but that it should be identified and documented on your SOP. So the database structure when you form the database, you also need to consider this kind of a situation. And the next principle or the PTC is that you just you can select the LLT, but at the same time you always look at PT, HLT, HLGT, and SOT, SOC. You need to check them in order to be assured that your choice of the uh, language or the LLT is correct. Metra has a lot of terminologies, but do not provide a definition. But still, it has a hierarchy. So you, if you identify some potential LLT, then you can go into like PT and HLT and up to AOC so that you can identify what that LLT actually means. So you need to check the hierarchy. For example, you have the low energy reported information, so you want to uh, code it. So you try it, you search it on the Medra, but there is no uh, terminology for that. So you find, you try to find it out. Then you believe worn out as LLT would be the appropriate one. So you check the PT, and the PT is fatigue. So now by checking at the higher PT, you are be assured about your 
selection. So you can see that the, the reported concept is well reflected into your choice of LLT. The next quiz. So the PB personnel received the AE report, and there is nothing more, just the saying abuse. So here, the PB personnel, what kind of the activities or the action the person has to take? One is just try to find out LLT abuse and decode it. Or secondly, uh, the identify more information from the person who report the situation and then code it. Of course, here we need to check further information, particularly the term abuse. In English, means the abuse of drug or the physical abuse. So it can mean two different things. So the term abuse itself cannot show or uh, let us know what happened. So if you are not able to draw the information from the context, then you need to uh, gain more information from the person who reported the situation uh, so that you can identify the actual uh, situation and then code it. That is the best practice. But if it is a post-marketing report, a uh, ADR report, it might not be easy to do this. So what we can do is that there is a, a unevaluable event LLT. So there is a code called as unevaluable event. It's kind of a placeholder. So if you're not able to get the additional information and also you cannot be sure about the reported information, then you can use unevaluable event as a coding language. A little bit difficult question. Red skin on soles of feet is reported. So the red skin on the soles of feet. So what would be the appropriate LLT for this one? What would be the most appropriate and most specific LLT out of five? It may be easy for you to have the Korean language here, but I just have the English version. Because the reported information says red skin, the number one option here is the skin red. But there is no indication for the location of red skin, so it's not clear. So more details is needed. The second option, erythema. Erythema is similar to the red skin. And here in option two says erythema of extremities. But here the reported information is very specific about the area it's the soles of it the third option says plantar arrhythmia it means planta is the sole of the fit in the clinical term and arrhythmia is the red skin so it would be easy if you understand and if you know the uh, medical terminology then it would be easy to find the answer, but the medical terminologies are not uh, the ones that we often use in our daily lives. And the number four here is the redness of legs. The legs are not the soles of feet. And the fifth is the localized erythema. The location is not specified here. So here the answer is a three, the plantar erythema. So these are the principles of coding convention in some cases. In PTC, there are some criteria for terminology selection. I cannot explain all of them here on the slide. The PTC document deals with these type of a different uh, criteria for the, the terminology, so now I will explain some of them. You cannot add information encoding you are just transferring reported information into metra terminology you don't assess or you don't make any judgment or decision so there is no diagnosis part in the coding for example abdominal pain increase the serum amylase and increase the serum repose and the doctors look at them and then believe that the pancreatitis so it added, it does not, it shouldn't happen.
it would be nice if all the uh, reporting is clean, but there are some ambiguous uh, information contained. And so this is what to do in cases like this. And so, of course, uh, efforts have to be made in order to get more specific information. But when that's not possible, what can we do? So if the serum calcium is more than 1.6, therefore high uh, kalemia, so it's uh, hyperkalemia. And so can we just accept this? But the, uh, the normal level uh, is not 1.6. 1.6 is too low. So the number is there. And, and, and that for 1.6, it's reported that it's a high, in, in uh, high uh, calcium. Uh, so the high potassium, excuse me. And so, uh, in, so this is incorrect. So you could uh, put in uh, abnormal, uh, abnormality in terms of uh, serum uh, potassium. And so uh, you have to, so in cases where the, it's not clear, where the texts are clear or are correct, or the numbers are uh, uh, correct, then you can use the term uh, abnormality. Here it says GU pain. So GU, well, uh, given uh, the, if you, it's uh, possible to know what GU means, reading the report that you could do specific coding. But if such information is not available, what uh, GU, uh, it refers, uh, sometimes it's not clear whether it refers to genital urinary or the gastric ulcer, because GU could mean both. So here you cannot make a decision. So if without additional information, well, you should not make a decision on your own. So uh, here, what's clear at least is that there is pain. So in this case, you just have to choose pain. So that would be the best uh, coding. So now about a combination a term. So uh, we can do coding using combination terms. So if uh, there are two, for instance, terminology, but one terminology is more uh, specific. So there is uh, you have to choose the more specific one. So arrhythmia, uh, arrhythmia uh, due to uh, AFib. Then, of course, if you have AFib, of course, uh, there's going to be arrhythmia. And so in that case, you would just choose just AFib because AFib would be more uh, specific. And uh, same, so there is a liver function uh, disorder, so the acute uh, hepatitis. And so uh, acute hepatitis, of course, would be a sort of uh, liver function uh, disorder. So here you would just need to uh, code uh, acute uh, hepatitis. And so when there are a uh, combination term, so retinopathy due to uh, diabetics, so here, you do not have to choose uh, diabetics and the retinopathy. You have to choose uh, diabetic retinopathy. And as for the uh, rash uh, from uh, uh, it uh, with uh, accompanied by itchiness, you could just say uh, itching rash. So if there is a combination term, uh, then it would be better to choose that combination term. But you have to know these combination terms to be able to identify them or in order to search them. But there are some terms that do appear uh, on a, a, a more often. And so you do get used to these sort of uh, combination terms. And by providing, uh, by uh, separating uh, the the words or the terms, you uh, if that promise, provides more uh, clinical information, then you have to uh, choose them separately. And so, for instance, when there is a, a risk a fracture due to fall, then here you have to have two separate coatings, one for the uh, risk fracture, the other for the fall. And as for the uh, and when there is of a tumor, um, then you have to be more uh, specific. So you have the tumor type as well as gene uh, involved the gene type. And about a clinical uh, exam. So this is a how to do in case of clinical exam. Here, you have to distinguish 
whether it's a bad patient, that is, whether this is a bad medical condition, or whether this is about uh, the result of, of some sort of exam or some sort of test. For instance, the reported information is hypoglycemia. Uh, so the doctor said it's a hypoglycemia. And so uh, the LAT should be hypoglycemia. Uh, so, and this is related to SOC uh, metabolism. However, when there is a glucose uh, reduction or decrease, what this is not about medical condition. So there was a test, and the test showed that there was a decline in the glucose. And so this is about, so you, this has to be the result of clinical test. And so here you have to choose a glucose a decrease. And so this is related to SOC clinical test. And so you have to look at what's been reported and make adjustment as to whether this is about medical condition about or whether this is about the results of uh, tests or exam. Now about you know what's uh, about the units. So the units have to be clear uh, to be able to do coding. Well in Medra you cannot put in the numbers. So if the glucose is uh, 40 milligrams per a decibel, then if you know what the normal level is, you know that this number is too low. And so uh, you could code in you know, a glucose low. But if there's no unit, if you could just you know look at uh, 40, but I mean this is an information that you cannot uh, confirm. So if it is a milligram per a uh, decimeter, that this would be low. But if it's a milliliter, this would be high. You know, glucose would be high. And so here you would uh, have to just to describe, or you ha would have to use an LAT that uh, that says, you know, abnormal uh, glucose. And so you have to make sure that uh, units that is are used uh, properly and clearly. So uh, let me give you a quiz. So the reported information says hypoglycemia. So this means low uh, blood uh, glucose. And within the parenthesis, there is a number, relevant number. So blood glucose is 200 milligram uh, per uh, deciliter. And so uh, you have to Google to see what would be the normal range of blood glucose. And so uh, on an empty stomach, it has to be 100. So at the maximum, it could go like 200. And so uh, you see the uh, the reported inf uh, information and uh, the uh, the numbers here do not match. So when uh, there is mismatch, when there's uh, ambiguity, you have to use the term abnormal. So this would have to blood glucose abnormal. So uh, next quiz. So we have two or three more uh, uh, coding related quizzes to go. So it says infection after surgery. So that's what's been reported. So A would be infection. B would be a post-operative wound infection. C is a surgical wound infection, and D with the post-operative infection. So you have four choices here. And uh, what's been uh, reported is that there is an infection after the surgery. So you chose D. D is the right answer. Uh, D is the right answer because A, infection, that's too broad. It's not specific enough. In the case of B and C, well, uh, there's a, a additional term called wound. But in what's been reported, there's no mention of wound. And so no new information should be added in terms of coding. And D, uh, it just talks about time-wise uh, condition. So that is uh, infection after the operation. So that's a post-operative infection would be the right uh, way to do coding. So post-operative means after the operation and after the procedure would be post-procedural. And if during the operation, it would be intraoperative. So those are the, uh, the terms uh, that are used in medra as medical terms. So next. So you have to try a little bit harder to find the answer. 
And so what's been reported is that uh, a person became colorblind in adolescence. Well, A and B, you know, the, the, the order is a different, uh, they're two, the same words, but uh, different orders. And the C, that's a British spelling, and D is the American way of spelling of color. And so in LRT, or they accept uh, both British and American uh, uh, spelling. And uh, Medra uh, from PT and above, they use the British. However, at the LLT level, uh, both the American and the British way of spelling are acceptable. And what's reported in, uh, uh, in British spelling, then you have to find the answer in the British spelling. But if it's in American, reported in American uh, spelling, then you have to choose uh, the LLT with the uh, American spelling. And so... You have to find a color of blindness, or there is a, a genetic a, a color blindness. So that would be uh, the first one that would come up. But if you just choose color blindness, well, it could be a, a completely different coding because uh, this is a person who had developed a color blindness in adolescence, so he was not born with it. So therefore, uh, it, it's an acquired uh, condition. So you have to choose a, uh, the one with the uh, term acquired. So what to report it? It's quite uh, uh, ambiguous. It says turned very crazy. And so, you know, it's really uh, out of context. So there's, you know, you don't know who, what turned crazy, whether it's the hair or the skin or, or the ointment or the product. It's not, uh, I mean, you would not know what turned a very uh, crazy. So if in a case like this, the best practice would be to ask the person who have uh, made the uh, report but if that is not possible, I mean, what would be uh, the uh, the best possible answer? That would be B. That would be an evaluable event. Uh, so uh, such reporting, you know, should really not be included because they cannot be uh, used uh, for the fin final analysis. So we dealt with uh, issues related uh, coding. Now we're going to be dealing with analysis and query of data that have already been uh, coded. And so of coding, we have the PTC documents. And for we do have PTC documents for the data analysis. And so data search rules uh, can uh, be used by uh, different institutions to come up with their own rules. Our uh, query uh, it's it's a computer language used to request a uh, search, but it could be a bit different uh, for Medra. If you look at the graphs here, on the left hand side you see a computer. So within a database, uh, there are you know, tens and thousands of cases, and uh, those uh, cases need are coded in terms of LLTs. Among all those coded LLTs or the cases, I should be able to find the, on the ones that I want to see at this point in time. And in this case, I would use what's called a query. Uh, Medra is very detailed uh, terminology. And so you could not just look at it by PT. So you have to if you want to look at all the cases related to a topic, you have to get a list of relevant PTs and then do the query uh, to uh, search it through the databases. And in that case, you will be able to see the LTs that are related to your PT. And so the PT list is actually what uh, we define as query in Medra. So there's a PT, and then if you choose the PT, then uh, the uh, the LTs below that PT would be automatically as selected. And so uh, the initial PT list is defined as query. So uh, let's look at this um, in a diagram. So we have uh, there are fourteen cases here. 
So uh, related to our diabetic drugs, there are uh, 14 uh, cases that have been reported. And then there was a st the safety related issue. There is a, a rep there is a, a issue with uh, pancreas. And there was a request to review uh, this issue. If this is not coded well, then you would have to open each and every cases to see whether each case is related to pancreatitis. But if it's uh, well coded with the LLT, then you would not have to worry about that. You could use the LLT because uh, you would be able to open uh, the hierarchical uh, structure and relate it to, because we wanted to look at uh, pancreatitis. Then uh, the SOC uh, would be related to a GI, and then we would have to go down to look at uh, the pancreas. And so we begin from the uh, GI, uh, SOC, and then there is a GLGT related to pancreas, and then there's acute and chronic uh, pancreas. So you can, uh, uh, you will be able to determine, uh, identify all those different uh, HTCs. And so LLT2, well, that's a three, and two is related to uh, three and five and four. So you can look at cases three, four, and five. And about ulcer, pancreatic ulcer, that would be six, seven, and nine. So there is a relevancy there. So those cases would also have to be looked at. But if you stopped here, there will be cases that you could miss. But with the red dotted uh, lines, you see the secondary structure. And this is related to pancreatic of uh, volume. And so uh, you would need to look at, at the secondary location. So LLT1, excuse me, LLTE and LLTA. So you would also have to look at uh, case one and case two. But you have to look at more. You would also have to search or the query by clinical tests. So related to pancreatitis, you would have done some tests. And so uh, so there would be um, so amylase increase. Our case would also have to be looked at because the amylase would be shown as a result of pancreas uh, testing. So if you were just going to look at uh, GI, SOC, so you would only look at six cases. But how you uh, went a step further, uh, you went to look at additional SOC as well as clinical tests. And and so you would be, you know, you should be able to uh, include all, all of this in order to have a full uh, query. And so you need, so you apply this to look at the results. And that would be the first step. And so you have to get a PT by a topic and then uh, you do a, a verification. And, and the list that is a pre-composed uh, uh, list is what's called uh, standardized MEDRA uh, queries, where SMQ uh, stands for standardized MEDRA queries. So uh, we do not have a direct uh, translation for this. As mentioned uh, before, SMQ uh, refers to a list of PT that can be used to do a search by a topic. And so SMQ uh, refers to uh, the group of terminologies that belong to one or more associates that uh, are related to a certain medical condition or an area of interest. Here are uh, symptoms, diagnosis, a uh, set of symptoms, a physical exam opinions, and the lab test results would be uh, included on this list. And the SMQ is uh, created in order to be able to do case identification and search. And here you see an example. And this is a uh, 25 version 25, and there are about a uh, uh, level one. Uh, 110 level one uh, SMQs. So there are 110 and 
I have only listed a few examples here. Please read them through. Uh, they are of uh, there are many SMQ related topics that are related to disorders or uh, drugs. Or, for instance, uh, the granulocytosis or the shocks uh, that are related to AES. So those topics related to AES have already been developed as SMQs. COVID-19 has recently been added to this uh, SMQ. And now about the SMQ data uh, characteristic. And the SMQ is developed at the Medra PT level. However, uh, LLT, as you know, is a subordinate uh, to a PT. And there are four subordinate LLTs would also be included in the SMQ. And, uh, but so SMQs are recommended to be made at the PT level. So our uh, SMQ, SMQ, excuse me, contains both PT and LLTs. And next, about narrow and broad search uh, SMQs. Uh, more, uh, out of 110 SMQs, uh, most of them are uh, have uh, the search range of either narrow or broad. In case of narrow, a uh, specificity is what's uh, focused at, and this. And in case of broad, what well, sensitivity is uh, focused on? So when doing uh, the narrow search, you only use of uh, the, uh, the the narrow terminology. But you do a broad uh, search. You have to do search both with the narrow term as well as a broad term. And so. Uh, let me give you an example of how the search can be done. As for uh, for the uh, narrow uh, search that you, this would be, uh, you would have try to catch a large fish. And in case of broad uh, search, and this is when you're trying to get as many fish as possible with uh, the net. And so here uh, about the lactic acidosis uh, SMQ. So because of the uh, glucose uh, metabolism, we would produce energy and the byproduct would be lactic acidosis. And uh, when this is accumulated in body, when this is produced in mass, and there will be uh, imbalance between base and acid, and that would lead to lactic acidosis. Here you see uh, the, uh, the narrow and broad uh, search terms. And for the narrow, well, you have a very of uh, uh, the diagnosis uh, terminology, such as the lactic acidosis, or the increase in uh, blood uh, lactate. However, for the broad uh, search terminology, you know, ex uh, the uh, search uh, range expanded. Although th there's no uh, diagnosis for the lactic acidosis, but uh, if there are uh, symptoms that have been reported and they could potentially be a lactic acidosis, and in order not to miss out, uh, that would be included. Not just the symptoms, but also a uh, therapies or the, uh, the treatment would be uh, included. And so uh, these are the examples of narrow or broad search. Next is about a special SMQs that have uh, algorithms. At 110, about 10 uh, uh, SQMQs have uh, algorithms. And uh, so a per uh, weight could be given to a particular group of terminology or uh, there is a, a predefined uh, combination that ha And in those cases, uh, they would be algorithmic uh, same cues. And so you look at an algorithm and uh, you would be, uh, and with that algorithm, you'll be able to find uh, uh, the answers that you need and that would be the uh, algorithmic SMQ. And uh, the, uh, for instance, an anaphylactic uh, reaction would be a, a most well-known algorithmic SMQs. And so from range B and C and D, or they are about the topics. In case of range B, they, they include terms related to acute respiratory failure. And the C, it would include things like angioedema. Uh, and as, uh, as and D would include uh, diastolic as well as systolic uh, BP. 
And so if you're going to do narrow a search, you would only look at uh, what's within uh, range A. But if you're going to do broad search, then you would have to uh, to do search by end and or of uh, ranges B, C, and D. And so you would, of course, uh, get a term that is within the range of A, but you would also sometimes get a term knowledge that is both in the B as well as in C. So, for instance, uh, there has to be acute aspirative failure as well as uh, allergic edema, and that would be in you know, a higher possibility of anaphylaxis. So B or C or B and D, or there is an algorithm uh, to support this. And in uh, range B includes asthma. In, in range C, there is, uh, in D, there is uh, a BP uh, reduction. And asthma uh, would not be really related to uh, anaphylaxis. If it, this is included, there would be more noise. And so uh, in order to increase the specificity, the, we uh, would use this uh, uh, algorithm SMQs. And so this is what that means here. To the right, you have the case review. And that uh, will be the cases with, with high possibility of anaphylaxis response. And the ones that are, uh, and the ones that would go downwards, and those are uh, the ones that, that are not identified to be uh, the cases. And so you would open up each case to see you know, if it's really anaphylaxis and whether this is related to the drug that it, uh, we are currently looking at. And about uh, hierarchical SMQs. Some uh, SMQs contain hierarchical uh, relations. And uh, this is not related to uh, PT, LT, and other uh, hierarchies. And so this is just a, a structure within SMQs. So what would be at the top would be level one, and then below that would be level two, and below that would be level three, and four, and so forth. And at level one, there are 110 SMQs. So at the top level, there would be 110 SMQs. But if you would count the SMQs at the lower levels, there would be more than 110. And for instance, we have a hematopoietic uh, cytopenia, or uh, there is the uh, different, uh, there will be, you know, uh, different types of, you know, uh, the hematopoietic conditions. So you would have to uh, in, uh, have to combine all of this. So there could be hematopoietic uh, cytopenia affecting more than one type blood cell, or there could be uh, hematopoietic uh, erythropenia as well hematopoietic leukemia, uh, excuse me, leukopenia uh, as well as hematopoietic uh, thrombocytopenia. So you would have to add it up to a higher level to come up with the accurate uh, term or the SMQ. And also, uh, the same cues can be either be active or inactive. But uh, as of now, there's no inactive uh, SMQ. And uh, there is uh, the status flag for uh, the terminology that is assigned to SMQs. And uh, once the PT is included in SMQ, this is never deleted. And if it's no longer a PT because of update in the MEDRA, uh, if the concept has changed, well, and that uh, uh, terminology, would, a term would become inactive. And so you would see inactive uh, PTs that is shown in uh, with the PT in red box. And this is about the uh, last portion about SMQs. Uh, SMQs can be applicable to many different and therapeutic areas. And this is a search logic that can be reused. And that is because SMQ is, uh, when at the time of development, validated within more than two uh, databases. And as, say, uh, as I showed you in the, in the, uh, in the ex example cases uh, related to pancreatitis, to, uh, you know, to see how many uh, cases have been reported, 
If, uh, then uh, we would search our database utilizing SMQ, and we would I have we found n case n number of cases. We've done the in depth of uh, research, and we have found that a few cases have high probability. And so uh, SMQ uh, provides that sort of a uh, communication. And SMQ is maintained by MSSO and GMO. And so when there is a version upgrade, uh, companies don't have to uh, worry about that because they can just use uh, what's been provided. And uh, SMQs cannot cover all the problems. Although it, uh, the SMQs have been tested during uh, development, but there is continuous improvement and additions. So we have to check whether uh, additions have been made. Now, where uh, can SMQs be implied? Uh, SMQs are used mostly uh, in uh, post uh, uh, marketing. However, uh, SMQs can also be used as a screening tool uh, for the clinical uh, trials. And if there is an issue that's been checked uh, previously, then SMQs can be used uh, for that purpose. And uh, for SMQs can also be used to check for the proven uh, safety issues. And in uh, databases uh, with large uh, cases, uh, SM can be used uh, to, uh, for uh, signal detection uh, purposes. And also, SM keys can be used uh, uh, for single case alerts. And if there is an SMQ PT report, and if you want to look at it right away, then you can uh, and you can use that uh, for uh, you know uh, SMQ for that uh, purpose. So SMQ it can be useful to in those cases. And I have a simple analysis uh, scenarios. So uh, let me be quick. I've been long. Uh, so this is first a scenario. This is before uh, marketing. So for eight years, a company uh, began uh, development for a, a treatment of uh, onychomycosis, and this is expected to require investment of $1.2 billion. And if there's an AE uh, reported, and the same key would be implemented on a regular basis to identify such IEs. Ace, excuse me. So if there are uh, out of 100,000, if a five uh, possibility of uh, anemia cases are uh, identified, and this is uh, quite as uh, of, uh, this is uh, hemolytic anemia, this is a quite serious uh, condition. And so uh, if there are five of such cases identified, then the, clinic, uh, the development process would have been stopped. So the management has made a decision to stop the project. By stopping the project early on, uh, the company was able to reduce the cost, the potential cost, and also prevent uh, risk to the patient. And then uh, there was, uh, this is another scenario. So there is a therapeutics that is already available in the market, and the fourth such uh, drug was under development. And other uh, products are known to have a relation to a, a hypertension as well as uh, the angel uh, edema. And so uh, these sort of, of AEs were known as acceptable of dangers. So there was this sort of a class effect. And so in the uh, post-marketing uh, databases, uh, hypertension SMQ and angioedema SMQs were continuously implemented. And then uh, after uh, uh, some time, it was found that the new drug had no relation to uh, hypertension SMQ and angioedema SMQ. And so by doing so, uh, it was possible to provide a safer uh, therapy to patients. And so I covered a Medra uh, background and about coding, about SMQs. I've made a long presentation here, uh, but I want to make an announcement. Uh, so there's, and so there's going to be a user group meeting uh, next uh, week. And if there are Medra users, uh, you can participate in part one uh, through uh, online.
because uh, offline uh, participation or the uh, the application is uh, almost is already full, so you can participate uh, online at least. So I, I hope that uh, many many of you will join us for that online session. With that, I would like to conclude my presentation. Thank you.